right now we're joined by Mika Eminen, 2014 Hall of Fame inductee, who's in Helsinki right now. Thanks for joining us, Mika. Thanks, Mike. How are you? Good, good. So, you know, we're, we're having a big discussion about, you know, the Hall of Fame coming up and Shane Van Boning being inducted and, and being the first U.S.-born player uh, since 2018 to get into the Hall of Fame. And, you know, you were around for his whole career and just wondered if you could kind of share with us a little bit about what you remember seeing from Shane when he started, uh, you know, what makes him different, where he's at today, uh, you know, things like that. Okay. Um, I, I first uh, started seeing him, uh, I think it was during the IPT he was coming on the scene. Like, so that should be around uh, 2005, six, uh, you know, in my case. And um, yeah, I mean, it was it was just easy to notice uh, right from the beginning that he, uh, the guy has like his kind of own little own style, own own little bit of flair in his game. And uh, he, you know, he I think ever since you know. From the first time I knew him, he, you know, seemed like he always had that big break, but he's really developed it. And uh, he kind of changed, uh, you know, he changed the way guys were breaking balls, like eight ball and 10 ball, especially. Right. Like the nine ball side break was different because, you know, that's just, it's a little bit more control than more than power. But, you know, he's power break on uh, from the box is obviously like one of the best might not be the <clears throat> best control but he he does have enough power and even when he doesn't hit it good he he's got enough bounce where it just beats the scratch into the side and he's just like he, he created like a new style of breaking and then people you know had to study him because it was just it was just too strong you know kind of interesting how did you see his game progress over the over the course of of the time you've known him yeah like from in when when i first recognized him you know he i think he wasn't like mentally struggling but i, I don't think his pot, potting was that good in in the like 2006 7 but then he he did kind of just have this high gear <clears throat> and a big break and uh, you know when you when you're breaking that well, it adds confidence to your game, and it's you know easy to just get in into the flow of things. And you know you can really maybe you know just by sheer sheer you know fact that you're you know producing runs, you know just keeping the other guy on the seat. So it, you know it's not going to do much from there. So he's he's break was a bigger big advantage for him. Then, but now he's got like a more well-rounded game as he's uh, come along and he's played, uh, you know, uh, he, he's shown that he's a good all-around player, even, you know, one pocket and and straight ball. Yeah. And yeah, his straight ball game was not that good, like in, the, in you know, <laughs> that time, but he's obviously come along in that field as well, so. Yeah, yeah. And as far as, you know, his standing in the world, uh, you know, it seems like he's been in that top five conversation for for a number of years. I mean, there's there's some pretty good longevity to his career. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, you know, he's 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 still kind of, you know, young in, in a full career sense. And I feel like you know where he's at now uh, I, I had to like rank him in a certain way that you know it's it, you know maybe my opinion will change uh, two three years from now because it's just like he, he's still you know he's still developing i feel right in, in his career like his career path is you know it, he's gonna still, still win still titles upside? huh does he still have more upside do you think I'm not sure if he's uh, like upside. I'm not sure if that's a word I'd be looking for, but he's just so he's consistent. He's he's you know he's very well rounded, and uh, 
he knows how to just manage whatever you know whatever game he's playing he knows how to manage the, the problems you know including this like new nine ball break that matchroom has been enforcing upon us <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a big fan of that break but it's it is what it is you know right right so let's talk about i mean you've been around for for a number of years even before shane was around you saw you know the the careers you know guys like nick varner mike siegel buddy hall players like that where do you rank shane in the you know u.s born players over the last 50 years let's say from 75 on um you know how what is what is your top 10 u.s born players from 75 on yeah um you know i have um i have a list here and um, mike siegel is in there even though i didn't really i came right after he had kind of uh you know disappeared from the scene right but i you know i just have to include him by sheer fact that you know i just you know i've seen i've you know seen him win titles on like you know accustats blah blah like old, old videos and you know it is for a fact he was a phenomenal player but should i just go down the list now or sure so i i do rank like earl strickland as a uh, number one you know, on my list uh you know i um definitely like <clears throat> you know playing <clears throat> nine ball as as a like a power player i think he's just the uh, you know he was he was he pioneered this this style of playing this power play and like really just high gear high big stroke moving the cue ball a lot being able to just like do serious damage uh at any given time in in a match you know he'd be like he's he's a threat to like you know, put like a, a six pack anytime. It's just, it was just like in, in like the nineties, he was the player to watch because, you know, if you wanted to play proper nine ball, I, you know, like Efren's a great um, nine ball player, but he just, uh, he, he didn't have the same like high gear. Right. Just to, because, you know, just that's, that's Earl, you know? <laughs> Even though Earl has his own, <clears throat> you know, his characteristics as he, he creates problems for himself sometimes, and uh, but he, you know, when he's on, it was just it was just a be beautiful to watch, so, and I kind of tried to um, emulate some of, some of his style. You know, I, I I feel like I've learned techniques from some European players because I, you know, kind of before I went to the states. 1996 and uh you know what even though i was traveling like asia a little bit before that but you know i i was influenced by you know oliver ortman tom storm ralph Suquet, thomas anger but then you know watching earl was like added a little bit um another dim dimension to my game and and when i saw earl he, he actually came to finland 1992 he did some like exhibitions and I, I played a little exhibition match against him and I was like just flabbergasted like it's just like he's <laughs> just the, the power and just the, the flow I was like okay this is like no this is I, I have to raise I have to raise the bar you know I have to like raise my own standards because it's like you know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be you know competing with guys like this I I just it, it was kind of interesting because it's just like I need to I needed to make a quantum leap in my game to even like hold a fork there. So yeah. uh, so that really in, inspired me, and that's why Earl is like definitely number one on that list. Who's your number two? And uh, I have Nick Varner as number two because uh, it's just uh, watching him play. You know, like I I I got to witness him like ever since like 1992. You know the he played in the challenge cup i i, I went to see him play in uh taipei 1992 he, he, like I, I just walked into a room and you know i'm watching him like warm up straight ball and he runs like 250 balls <laughs> like and then he he plays second in that inter international tournament 
in in Taiwan, and then you know going uh, traveling a little bit, and then eventually going to the states, nineteen ninety six, where he was still very active and watching him play all these games. He just and then knowing that all the titles he's won before, it's just like uh, he, he's. He's cemented a legacy that is is just hard to uh, argue. You know, he, he plays all the games well, and he, I've watched him win a bunch of tournaments. You know, in person. So uh, uh, he's just you know he has that history and he's these he, he's titles and where you know Shane isn't there yet. He might he might you know eventually like beat him. Off, off, you know, where I would, you know, have to rank di differently. But right now, I think uh, Shane's uh, coming right behind those two guys because of, you know, where he's at now. So you have Shane so, number three? Th therefore, I have Shane as number three right now. Okay. And who's number four? And then I have Johnny Archer. So, uh, you know, player Spent of the 90s. Uh, playing against him and the Moscone Cup. Played a bunch. Yeah, I played. Well, we played also Nick Varner was a bunch of times in, in the Moscone Cup in the, you know, um, early 90s, maybe like even even late 90s. And um, but like Johnny, like we've had like so many battles. I, I just, um, you know, also I watched him win that that uh, tournament in Sweden where like all the like a lot of the top Americans were there, like uh, even uh, Kim Davenport. Uh, but Johnny ended up winning that tournament, and uh, forgot who he beat in the finals. But um, Johnny was like this, you know, next, next. Uh, I want to say like maybe not. He's a little younger than Earl, but uh, kind of like. A new breed after after the a generation of Earl, and you know he's he's like nine ball break was just phenomenal, and he he's he had a real just a also like a very strong mental game and just a good routine, and you know yeah was a you know he was a you know, like technician, he wasn't like a power player like Earl, but he's you know he got the job done, and he was obviously like a uh, very, uh, you know, he stood out in the Moscone Cup a lot because he was kind of a that, that type of anchor, anchor player for the team. Right, right. And after him, and then I have Mike Siegel. You know, I uh, unfortunately didn't get to really witness him play much, but um, in person. So, uh, but you know, I. He's got a phenomenal touch, and uh, you know, I don't think they call him Captain Hook without, you know, <laughs> some uh, some truth to that. So, you know, I'm sure he was great, and uh, you know, in his prime, you know, he must have been a very tough guy to beat. So it's just you know, I have to put him in there. You have Buddy Hall. That's, that's, yes, and, Buddy and Hall. You see him much. Yes, yes, the rifleman. Uh, he he's he was just like a very. Also, I feel like he was mentally very strong, and I watched him play a lot. You know, in 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 the nineties, on the, you know, I played the, I actually played the Camel Pro Tour. Remember, like, right. and that that was some strong, that was some strong tour, and he was like he was always up there and just just a very uh beautiful um player to watch he has like his own like finesse his his style of play was kind of interesting and and I got a really beautiful backstroke and just a very solid you know um i think he uh I'm not sure if he won any us opens when I, when I was uh, he might have won a us open while, while I was he probably did in the nineties when he beat Johnny. Uh, I think I think uh, I think he beat. I think he won uh, nineteen ninety eight. Or am I wrong here? Don't know. When I finished, when I finished third, 
Did he? Did he beat Tang Ho in the finals? Like, am I getting the right guy? I remember he's not as good as he used to be. <laughs> but anyway, it's a, a great player to watch. Like, you know, really a, a technician. You know, beautiful stroke. Just a very uh, good mental game, and you know, just all all, all around the uh, tough. Uh, yeah. Number seven. Yeah, I kind of have a, you know, the only guy that's not already in the Hall of Fame on my list is is uh, Skylar Woodward. And, uh, you know, I've obviously seen him uh, since he was really, really young and, and just like, oh, you know, always he's impressed me uh, with his ferocity and just his power game I also you know he, he he banks the balls great he just he he has like kind of like the offensive style that i you know i like yeah he's not afraid to go for the shots and uh, that's like kind of like you know when i'm when i'm playing my best i i'm, I'm going i'm going for sub because it's <laughs> like i'm not like screw the book whatever the book says it's like once your confidence is high it doesn't matter if the ball right. goes in it's the right shot right so uh okay. yeah he's he's a fun to watch and uh, you know he's already like proven himself um you know two-time mvp at moscone you know he's been a instrumental force in in the u.s team there and he's you know he's won won titles with the best you know well, you know he's he's the, he's the best new player of his uh, you know this generation of Americans you know okay like he's Number following uh, he's following Shane's coattails right now yeah he is he is and uh, then I have um, Alan Hopkins got to uh, got to see him still when he was active on especially on the Campbell Pro Tour. You know, he 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 won a couple of stops when I was there. I think one in Columbus, Ohio, where uh, not sure if he beat. It might have been one where uh, Ginky Gink, made it pretty deep. You know, uh, rest in peace. Um, but like, yeah, Allen was also like one of these like you know legendary players that was still active. Uh, in, in the late 90s so I, I got to watch him play and you know interesting he's like weird short backstroke but you know he's just phenomenal player phenomenal touch very strong mentally and uh, very he's a clever guy like yeah. you know I you know he he's really a quite quite the like his strong money player right. and uh I uh, I remember he hustled me out of out of hundred dollars once <laughs> on a on a snooker snooker table. He put the he put the blue on like in the middle spot and the the, and the cue ball in the corner. And that's like on a twelve foot table from corner to corner. I don't know how many feet that's like. You know, Miles. do the math. It's Thirteen feet or something. And he's like, I'm uh, you know, he's like, give me like ten to one. And uh, no, I'm, I'm going to make this shot without looking. And he, uh, I was like, yeah, sure, let's let's go. I bet 100 against his 10. And he made it on the first try without looking. I'm like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Like, I'm done. I'm... <laughs> I it mean, you know. Like, it sounds like happens. It sounds like it was it was a good it was a good lesson because I was like I'm not playing any games with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like gonna start negotiating with this guy. <laughs> I mean I'll play nine ball, but if he starts like negotiating on some other things and like, you know, some gimmicks, I'm like, I, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So who do you have for your well, list? That was too? crazy. I mean, uh yeah, so anyway, but yeah, fun fun player to watch, you know, really tough, tough, tough as nails, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, and then I have a, you know, kind of interesting player, uh, Dallas West. Um, I just have to like put him on on the list because you know, 
<laughs> I didn't really watch him play much, but I, you know, he did make it to the finals of uh, like 1995 World Night Ball Championships in Taipei, if my memory serves we want me well and he lost to ortman but like just for the for the sheer fact that he was you know like already like oh i don't know he was must have been like close to 60 at the time and to be playing that well against like younger guys you know just uh to me it shows that man like when he was younger he must have been like ridiculous and so, he was essentially a straight. He was essentially a straight ball player for so so him to play well later in his career in nine ball was pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, I I just have to like just it's impressive how he will still you know play and like have this have this uh, ability to you know beat some of the best nine ball players in the world uh, at a very you know on a more um, you know higher age. So uh, that that goes to show, that. and I'm I'm also you know I'm a fan of straight ball, so like you know, but he's he's got re- very nice touch. He, he his cue ball control was you know phenomenal. So I had to like, you know, that's he made the list. Yeah, at number ten, rounding out your list, and uh, at number ten, Jim Rempe. You know, he uh, you know, he was probably one of those guys that you know before i knew any other americans you know i've seen him like do his like videos and like you know watched him play some on accustats when when it was still on like vhs tapes you know like uh so just yeah great player was was fun to watch and uh yeah, he played. He also played uh, in in the nineties, and and he was still in the Moscone Cup team. So, you know, yeah, um, just a yeah, you know, he's he's a legend. So, um, have to uh, give him props. Yeah, great. Well, it's a it's a great list. Uh, Earl Strickland up top, uh, finishing off with three of the big players from the 70s 80s you know alan dallas jim rempe uh really solid list yeah, yeah. i hope i like i might you know did i space out did i like was there somebody that i should i don't know that, that's that's there's what i felt players, like there's a lot of players that you could interchange positions with or put into that top 10 and and, and no one would argue with you but it's, it's always interesting to see you know what jumps out to a, a player like yourselves mind someone who's been around for a long time uh you know to to see how you would rank these guys so um no i think it's a really solid list yeah i had to like include like you know the 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 whole you know their their resume and like you know some of them like had like staying power in the career and and sure. just all i just like there's all the all the factors right came in and yeah you know I mean, maybe maybe Rodney Morris should have been on the list, but I just uh, it's just, but that's that's a different that's a different factor, you know. Uh, yeah, it's hard to anyway. determine who's 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 on and who's off, but I think uh, I think he did a nice job with it, and um, we appreciate we appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping in with us, and thanks for offering your perspective. Thanks, Mike. Yeah.